Hey everyone, and welcome back to the shop. Today I'll be using spray foam insulation on the ceiling of the shed. The big thing that I didn't know about spray foam insulation is that the canisters need to be between 75 and 85 degrees for your best results. So with that in mind, I built this little hot box. This is something that I'm not going to just turn on and walk away. I'm gonna keep my eye on it. You don't want the canisters to get too hot, but at the same time, you definitely want to bring that temp up. It's about 60 degrees here today. And the other thing is the surface that you're spraying should be around 70 degrees. So I've got two electric heaters. They've been out here for a few hours warming up this space. The system that I'm using, this is the Tiger Foam system. It's pretty straightforward. Looks very easy to use. Of course, we'll see. The hoses are color coordinated, so you just attach each hose to the one that's indicated on the tank or the box and it also comes with several tips you've got a cone shaped tip and a fan shaped tip and these tips are temperature sensitive so if they turn blue that means it's too cold stop what you're doing and get the tanks warmed up this project is all about prep so make sure that you're going to be able to move around easily this little hot box is on a dolly so I can just push it around. You're going to want to cover anything that you don't want to get spray foam on with plastic. And I'm using a Tyvek suit, a full respirator, eye protection, and rubber gloves. Once the canisters are at the right temp, give them a good shake for one to two minutes. The canisters are plenty warm so I've turned off the heater and unplugged it. And with this system, the red coated hose goes to the A canister. Once it's hand tightened, I'll tighten it the rest of the way with the wrench that's provided. I've got my suit on and all of my protective gear ready, and now I'm turning the tanks on fully. Before I put the tip on, I'll give it about a quarter of a squeeze to make sure the material is coming out of both hoses. I'm starting off with the fan tip, and before I attach it to the gun, I'll use a little petroleum jelly around the connection to install it to the gun. This little clip here fits like that. And then you just pull it right around and it locks on the top of the gun. Like that. Another way to warm the tanks up is with a heating pad. Keep the tanks in the box and put the heating pad inside the box. The reason why I didn't do this is I only have one heating pad and it was just easier for me to make a box out of some plywood that I had here in the shop. Okay, well that went pretty smooth, a bit of a learning curve, but that's pretty much how it is with everything. The one thing I will say is definitely don't spray or pull the trigger all the way. When the tanks are full, if you pull the trigger all the way, it's too much pressure and you end up with a big mess. I did call Tiger Foam Technical Support just to make sure I'm giving you the right information and they confirmed it that uh, when the tanks are full, just pull the trigger maybe a quarter to three eighths of the way and that will give you a nice even fan. And by the time you saw me spraying, I had already pretty much figured that out. 
Uh, as the tanks, as the tank pressure goes down, you'll pull the trigger a little bit more. It's one of those things you're just going to get a feel for. Uh, one thing you want to avoid is only spraying one component. So as the tanks start to empty, inevitably one is going to empty before the other, and you don't want to spray just one component because it will not cure. So as the tanks start to get lower, take the tip off of the gun and make sure that both components are coming out of the orange part of the gun. If only one component is coming out, then put that to the side and start with a new kit. Another big thing is prep. This is all about prep work. It's really easy to make a mess. I didn't put a drop cloth down on the floor. I kind of wish I did. It's not a big deal because it is a work surface, but it did take a little bit more time to clean up. A few things that were just lying around got the foam insulation on them, and now they're kind of a mess. And I'm talking about my extension cord, my broom, things like that. My shoes are a mess. So when you get your Tyvek suit, get the little booties that go with it. Otherwise, you're going to ruin your shoes. Uh, the tips for the gun, I think this kit came with eight tips. Five were the cone-shaped tips. Three were fan-shaped tips. I only used the fan-shaped tip. I was wishing that they sent more. I didn't run out, but I was a little concerned that I would while I was working. Uh, also, you don't have a lot of time to, once you pull the trigger and you're using a tip, you don't have a lot of time to do something else. It's not like you can put the gun down and, and go get a cup of coffee. I think you only have maybe 30 seconds to a minute uh, before the material will cure in the tip and you'll have to replace the tip. That's why they give you extra tips. And the last thing I'm going to say is that this stuff is really expensive. I needed two kits for this project and each kit was about $550. So if you don't need to use it, don't use it and just use traditional insulation. The reason why I used the spray foam insulation is because I didn't want to vent the roof. It's a shed roof, so it's very difficult to vent, and by spray foaming the insulation on, that creates a vapor barrier, and you do not need to vent the roof then. So it really comes down to what makes the most sense for your project. For the walls, I'm going to use traditional insulation and then go over the insulation with a drop cloth vapor barrier. So I'm really happy with the way this turned out, and I'm excited to working on the next part of kind of updating and upgrading this barn and I'll be posting another video next week. So I hope you'll tune in for that and I'll see you then.